Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to share with you five essential tips, techniques, shortcuts to working faster in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I have this project on the timeline and you can see it's already edited and this is what your final projects might look like when you're editing lots of clips together in a couple minute long project. So I'm going to give you guys five things that you can take and use in your own projects to edit faster. To start, let's talk about our workspace and our actual work area. If you ever head over to window in the workspace panel, you can see that you have options to save your workspace or reset it to the default and Premiere gives you some presets that it switches into when you're working with titles or specifically for audio where it opens up the appropriate menus. So when you're working in the all panels workspace, depending on your monitor resolution or, or your needs and the way you like to work, you can edit all these windows, make things bigger or smaller, get everything right where you want it and then go to window workspace and save your custom workspaces so that you can always work how you like. So that's basic number one, get your workspace how you like it. I'm just using the default here and I usually just stick with the all panel section. But number two tip to working faster is you see this big long adjustment layer, this pink clip. Adjustment layers are basically blank slates for you to apply effects and coloring and color correcting onto that affects everything underneath that track. So you can apply effects onto several clips all at once without having to apply them to each individual cut. And the way you can create them is going to the project media bin, going to file new adjustment layer. You have to make sure the project media bin is highlighted for this to not be grayed out. Once you create it, it'll pop up in the media bin and you can drag it on top of your clips and extend it out for however long you want it to be. So you can add lumetri color effects or actual effects onto this and they'll affect everything underneath. But let's say we did add an effect. Let's say we added a faded and desaturated effect that we wanted to apply to multiple times without always having to recreate it because we did a lot of tweaking and adjusting. The next tip is working with presets. So whenever you go into the effects control panel on the right hand side, you can always right click and select all of the video effects and then right click and save them as a preset or you can select specific effects. So if I just wanted to save the motion of this clip or the opacity or the color of this clip, I could save those as presets, give them a name. If there was keyframes involved, you could choose how to scale and place them depending on each clip. I have a full tutorial that goes into this more in depth, but once you name it and press OK, if, whenever you go into the effects panel, under your presets, you should see all of your custom presets and now you can just click and drag these onto adjustment layers or specific clips and it'll repeat the same things every single time without having to rebuild them. Now the next tip I have is working with nested sequences. So you can see here in the beginning of this vlog, I have a little cinematic intro sequence and it's all one green sequence. And the reason that is, is I can always double click it and now I can see all the individual clips in here, edit them how I want, but when I go back to the full project, it's just one nice clip for me to move around or apply additional effects on top of all at once. So to create a nested sequence, all you have to do is select the combination of clips that you want to include. So I can highlight all of these and then just right click and nest the sequence. You should see, you can name it anything. So I can name it like cinematic sequence two and it'll pop up as one long sequence now for you to sequence and place in your main project more easily and then you can always double click to enter into it and work on those individual clips. So that's a really good way to chunk your project out and it does allow you some more flexibility because you can add effects on top of this kind of like an adjustment layer that will affect all of the clips inside of it. So the last and probably most obvious tip is getting comfortable with your shortcuts. So some of my favorite shortcuts you know C activates the cut tool V activates the move tool, real easy to go back and forth without having to go into this toolbar every time. But if you actually press option command K, you can open up the keyboard shortcuts menu, or you can go into Premiere Pro and check your keyboard shortcuts. And here you can see exactly every single shortcut that's in Premiere and what it maps to on your keyboard. So whether you're using a Windows or Mac, you can see what's going on, what happens when you press command, all the different shortcuts, or if you're holding alt, or if you're holding shift, you can see everything that happens. And you can map your own shortcuts in this menu. So if you wanna change the way something works, you can change the, the what a button does and make it just like the workspace custom to your workflow. 
But again, some of my favorite shortcuts are, you know, the CV tool to cut. Command K will just automatically cut at your timeline slicer. And some other cool cutting shortcuts are W on the keyboard will just cut an end of a clip and automatically push everything in the project back over so you won't have any gaps. You just wanted to trim the end of a clip. Also, if you want to just trim the beginning of a clip, you can press Q and that'll do the same thing. It'll just trim the beginning and make sure it squeezes everything back in together so there's no gaps. Or let's say you had a gap because you cut some parts of your project out or deleted some clips that you didn't want. If you right click, you can use ripple delete, which is what those shortcuts were doing, and it'll squeeze everything back together. So definitely get in there with your shortcuts, see what Premiere Pro offers, and I definitely plan on doing more shortcut tutorials in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments, if you learned any cool tricks or any cool tricks you have of your own. And make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can find me on social media at Justin Odisha if you want to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I love connecting with you guys on there. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.